And welcome back, sports fans. We're at Chapter 16, Section 2 for American History for students at Cooper Middle School in beautiful Drumright, Oklahoma. So when we last left off, we looked at the advantages and disadvantages, mainly the advantages of the North and the South, and their plans to win the war. Remember, the North's advantages were they had a bigger population, they had the factories, they had the railroads, and they had the Navy. For the South, not as many advantages, but the ones they did were have pretty good. They had just fought a defensive war, and they had better generals. The plans, the North's plan, Anaconda plan, blockade the South, nothing in, nothing out, take control of the Mississippi River, cutting the Confederacy in half. For the South, you had King Cotton. Don't sell the world cotton. Force them, European countries, mainly England and France, to come help the South win the war. And we talked about with the American Revolution what kind of advantages that can be if you're having to fight a war on multiple fronts. Well, today we want to look at who actually fought in the war. Okay, so your average soldier is between the ages of 18 and 30. Now, again, that's average. The book talks about kids as young as 10 and as old as 66 actually fighting in this conflict. And both rushed to enlist because both sides thought this conflict was going to be over really quickly. So they are rushing to enlist, to train, because they want to have a part in this conflict. Now, most of the people who con or fought in this were farmers. Well, that's easy to understand in the South. Remember, it's an agricultural society. But for the North... Not so much. I mean, you had factories and you had that. For farmers, this was an escape for boredom and to see the country. For many of them, they really have never seen anything outside maybe a 50-mile radius from where they were born. So this is an opportunity for them to travel. You had the peer pressure that, you know, my buddy is fighting, so I need to go fight so I can be with him as well, or maybe looking after a family member. You also had the adventure aspect that, you know, this is something to kind of go do, something I can tell the kids and grandkids one day that I was a part of. So then they went out to training. Drill, bayonet, and shooting. For southern soldiers, this also meant a lack of supplies. The south really didn't coordinate with one another. Soldiers in Virginia might lack boots where they can't find a boot that fits them. And there in, in Alabama, they might have a good supply, but they're not going to share. Remember, they're all about state rights. One famous Alabama soldier general states that I am still a rebel no matter who is in charge. So they're not coordinating with each other. So you go get your outfit, your uniform, your boots. You're lucky if you actually have a size that fits you. The camps, kind of disgusting not very sanitary. In fact, many will die due to the unsanitary conditions at these camps before they even get a chance to go out in the battle. There was all kinds of new technology during this time period. You had ironclads were essentially boats, metal at the front where you can kind of ram and everything. We mainly want to focus with the rifles. Remember us doing the dodgeball experiment outside how hard it was to actually get to where you wanted that target or that ball to go. Okay, that was how we kind of explained how a musket got fired. Really didn't have control once it went out of that barrel. Well, now we've cre created rifles. Way more accurate. That's the reason why at the first Battle of Bull Run, later Battle of Shiloh, and some other battles that we're going to talk about, the death rates are tremendous just due to this advanced technology. We're still fighting shoulder to shoulder, column formation, but now we have a weapon that is going to be way more deadly and accurate. And it's going to kind of change how warfare has to be fought after this conflict. All right, so a quick version of chapter 16, section 2. Remember, your assignment for this section is to post what you think the most important thing out of chapter 16, section 2 is. If you want to go look more in depth, again, there has been provided links for you on the textbook. All right, if you just have Instagram, that link is gone. However, you can go on Facebook, Cooper Middle School Social Studies, and that link is still up. You just scroll I think I posted March 28th, somewhere around there. You can scroll, you can find that, click, get the book, you can look over the section as you want. Remember on Fridays for the remainder of the school year, I will be doing a Facebook Live, Instagram Live period for an hour each, unless you guys have a lot of questions and then we can go longer if we need to, where I will go in depth, answer any questions that you might have. 
All right, so I will see you next time for chapter 16, section 3. And remember, don't forget to be